Hello everyone, I am Amit here. In last tutorial, we have seen linear regression in machine learning and the the map behind it and how we implement it. We implement it in Watson data set. And today we will learn further in the detail of linear regression. Before that, preparing data for linear regression. When you are preparing the data for linear regression, you must have uh, you must have these assumptions and you should follow these as a thumb rule like linear assumptions linear regression assumes that relationship between your input and output is linear it does not support anything else this may be obvious but it is good to remember when you have lot of attributes you may need to transform data to make the relationship linear okay transform of exponential relationship remove noise Linear regression assumes that your input and output variable are not noisy. Consider using data cleaning operation that you let you better expose and clarity of the signal in your data. This is most, most important for output variable and you want to remove outlier in the output variable by if possible. See this linear equation we have and if you will have more and more outlier, your linear line will uh, shift or you can say your slope will be uh, maybe decrease or increase based upon your outliers so we should clean those outliers or we should perform some uh, activity on those outliers and make make them reachable is most important for out, uh, output variable and you want to remove outliers in the output variable y if possible so we can remove the outlier if there there are numbers are few if the outlier numbers are more we can replace it with mean there are for there are different different techniques which you can apply on those outlier okay remove collinearity the linear regression will overfit your data when you have highly correlated input variables Linear regression assumes that there is no relationship between the features or column or you can say inputs. Okay. So consider calculating pairwise correlation for your input data and removing the most correlated. I will be covering this in uh, implementation tutorial and we will show you how to calculate correlation between the features. Okay. Gaussian distribution. Linear regression will make more reliable prediction if your input and output variable have a Gaussian distribution. You may get some benefit using transform on your variable to make them distribution more like Gaussian looking. Okay. If Gaussian distribution is normal distribution or you can say a bell curve distribution. It is like uh, this shape, right? Bell curve shape. It is famous shape in a statistic rescale input linear regression will often make more reliable prediction if you rescale input variable using the standardization and normalization i have already covered video on and standardization and normalization you can visit that uh, this will uh, rescale your variable in variable values or you can say feature values to uh, to a uh, similar scale why do we need a scaling like if we are dealing with data where features are age and other is salary so both are a different scale so we have to we have to convert them in a same scale like in our programming language what you are writing in any language once you have written the program the program will be converted into finally it will be converted into zero and one right in the same way select a performance measure our model model is ready to predict the value but before putting it in production, we need to check the performance of a model. For this purpose, we first need to measure how well or how poorly model fits the training data. Most common measure for regression model is root mean square error. It gives an idea of how much error the system typically makes in production. With a higher value for large error, therefore to train a training linear regression model, you need to find the value of theta that minimize rmse in practice it is simpler to minimize mse that is mean square error than rmse okay let me show you the diagram you can see uh, at at 0 0.5 value of x uh, 
we are predicting that value is 2 but real value is 5 you can see here as well uh, we are predicting 6 but actual value is 4 we are predicting 8 actual value is 6 so they this is the error right you can easily see this is the error uh, we are getting in our production so we have to reduce it how we can reduce uh, we if we calculate m and c we have taken as a 2 if we'll calculate m and c or you can say directly theta because our linear equation is y is equal to theta dot x right we have already seen so we cannot touch x because that's our input so we will be trying to find the best suitable theta for our linear equation once we have theta let me show you this is our equation right theta dot x if we'll get the best theta for a linear regression then our error will be reduced and we can get these theta using gradient addition which we will cover later so first uh, first is root mean square error so what we are doing actually if you can see this uh, uh, hypothesis of x so it means we are predicting it right so y predicted minus y actual where m is observation so we can calculate 1 by m and from i is equal to 1 to m hxi means that this is the predicted value and this is the actual value at ith row whole square and we are taking square root of it so that's our msc and msc is if you will just create just take a square of it you will get the um, msc the mean square tells you how close the regression line is set to set of the point it does this by taking distance from point to regression line okay then squaring them you can easily see right we have n number of observation i is equal to 1 and we are taking y i minus y predicted whole square okay or you can say error whole square and the other term is mean absolute error mae even though rmc is generally the preferred performance measure for regression task in some contexts you may prefer to use another function for example suppose that there are many outlier in your data in that case you may consider using the mean absolute error mean absolute error mae is the another loss function used for regression model ma is the sum of absolute difference between our target and predicted value this is our Tar target and this is our predicted value so it measures the average magnitude of error in a set of prediction without considering their direction okay so you can calculate it for hxi means predicted value of y at ith row and actual y value at ith row here m is number of observation so we will sum up and we will divide by m we will get the ma so these are the error which we were talking about earlier computing the root of sum of a square or rmse correspond to euclidean norm it is also known as l2 norm or we can write it in a this way or we can just write this computing the sum of absolute mae correspond to l1 norm which is also denoted as this okay it is also called Manhattan norms because it measures the distance between two points. Okay, so we'll understand including distance and Manhattan distance. So if you can see the diagram, there are two points, point one at one one position and point two at five four position. So Euclidean distances, uh, you'll you'll minus like uh, y min y two minus y one whole square x one minus x whole square you can understand right 5 minus 1 whole square 4 minus 1 whole square so 4 you will get 5 a Manhattan distance is you will take absolute value 5 minus 1 4 minus 1 so we have got 4 3 7 so Euclidean distance is 5 and Manhattan distance is 7 this this is the function for RMSE and MAE MA is Manhattan distance, RMSE is Euclidean distance. So, hope this part is clear. Now, we'll come to R square and adjusted R square. The most common interpretation of R square is how well the regression model fits the observation data. For example, 
if an r square of 60% reveals that 60% of data fit the regression model generally a higher r square indicates a better fit for the model r square r2 explain the degree to which your input variable explain the variation of your output predicted value so if r square is 0.8 it means 80% of variation in the output variable is explained by the input variable so in simple term higher the r square the more variation is explained by your input variables hence better is your model so if your r square is higher it it, it means that your model is model is working good so you you are targeting to get higher r square value okay and you we can see the formula here r square is equal to 1 minus ssrs sstot uh, what is ssrs is residual sum of squared error of r regression model or error and sstot is total sum of squared error so we can write it in a way 1 minus i is equal to 1 to n suppose n is the number of observation y i minus y i hat so y is actual value at ith row and this is predicted value at ith row whole square and here upon y i is actual value at ith row of and this is the mean value of y i so we will calculate r square using this function okay now adjusted r square what is adjusted r square however the problem with r square is that it will either stay the same or increase with addition of more variable even if they are, do not have any relationship with output variable this is where adjusted r square comes to help if in r, if you are using r square method to calculate and if you'll add another feature in your data set even though it is not relevant r square value will increase and you will assume that your yeah, r square value is getting increase it means our our model is working good and the new feature is relevant to our output but what is what is the real scenario you have added the unrelevant features uh, even even it is unrelevant the value has increased okay or our or, or, or square value will remain same if you are adding any unrelevant data so if both the cases are not good for your model right you will be in dilemma that we are uh, getting good r square value it means our model is working that's why adjusted r square came into picture so if you are building a linear regression on multiple variable it is always suggested that you use adjusted r square to judge goodness of your model in case you only have one input variable r square and adjusted r square would be exactly same okay typically the more non-significant variable you add into the model gap in r square and adjusted r squares increases if you'll add non-significant value your r square value will either will remain same or it will increase as you have added the new feature but in adjusted r square if it is not relevant uh, your adjusted r square value will decrease if it is relevant adjusted r square value will increase so we will see the formula of r square so r square adjusted is 1 minus 1 minus r square n minus 1 upon n minus p minus 1 where r square sample r square which we have already calculated for the sample n n is a total sample size and p is number of predictors or you can say number of features so suppose if you add a new feature so you are subtracting it from n so this upon value will get decreases right if it get decreases the above value gets increases right hope you understand it gets increases when it gets increases when you will minus one minus this value a bigger value means you will get a uh, small value right so r square adjusted value will decrease right in other case if a new added feature which is relevant then in that case it will be decreases and n minus 1 upon n minus p minus 1 will be increased right but at the same time if the feature is relevant r square value will be increased 
and one minus r higher value you will get a small value a small value multiply by n minus 1 upon n minus p minus 1 so you will get a small value right and 1 minus a small value it means you will get higher value of r square adjusted if your feature is newly added feature is relevant then your r square will increase and who this will be lesser value and after this one minus a small value you will get higher r square adjusted value if it is not relevant so it will it will not increase that much but n minus p minus 1 will uh, put impact on this whole value and you will be getting lesser value so if uh, you are adding non relevant values r square adjusted will decrease where r square value will remain same or it will increase right so hope this r square adjusted concept is clear now let's move to id we have already imported data data set pandas and numpy in earlier video and we have loaded it in x and y we have saved the tar data and target and now later we have splitted the data in test and train and in linear regression we have fit the x train y train we calculated the y prediction and we have we seen the graph between y prediction and y true and let's run till here so we'll go cell and run above all okay so you can see our code has completely run till here now we have called mean square error from sklearn matrix and mean absolute error for this is mse this is mae and rmse can be calculated by taking a square root of it right so let's run it so we have calculated mse and select mean square error and shift tab you will see y true y prediction and we will check for mean absolute error so select then shift and tab y true and y prediction okay so we can see msc is 22.09 now we'll calculate rmsc which is square root so we have used numpy dot square root msc so we can see 4.7 now we'll calculate ma we have given y test that is y true y prediction is prediction so you can say msc ma value is 3.06 this is manhattan and rmsc this is euclidean distance hope we have this is clear we have seen it right if you haven't seen it uh, you can just go back few minutes and you can review it okay we will call r2 square from sklearn dot matrix and we can we will select again and save tab you can see y2 and y prediction so you can say 68 percent means our data 68 percent r square value so this is good but not too good it should be higher okay so thanks for watching this video we will again meet again for linear regression and we will work on correlation topic and as well as loss or ridge and elastic net regression as well like and subscribe my videos